if my stream loses its velocity, what has to happen? If I lose velocity, what else do I lose? I lose my carrying capacity. The velocity and the carrying capacity are directly proportional. The faster the water is moving, the higher the carrying capacity. The slower it's moving, the lower the carrying capacity. Does that make sense? The, the load is all the stuff in suspension as well as on the bed load. All the stuff in the one of the things I want to make sure we talk about today are floodplains. By the way, right here, that is a test question. What is that here in a minute? Um, floodplains. Basically, the raised edges of the river. So we think about this, this from the edge of this right down here to here, it's all floodplain. Interesting history about the United States and dealing with floods. When you buy a home, one of the things you should definitely buy is flood insurance. It protects you in case your house floods. It's that simple. Your normal house insurance does not carry flood insurance. You have to buy the flood insurance separately. The crappy part is that the Mississippi River floods all the time. It's supposed to flood all the time. And that's why the Great Plains are such a rich source for farming. Because when the river floods, it takes all those nutrients and deposits it across the floodplain. So it's very rich for farming. But people are like, man, I love living by the river. It's flooding. I want to be right next to the river. So they build their homes right next to the river. Without thinking, the river floods. Unlike the Nile, that floods every single year, the Mississippi has these drastic floods that have, you know, basically almost three to four years. During the mid '90s, when we say that, you know, guys ever heard like a 10-year flood or the 50-year flood? You guys heard of those? Okay, those are long-term averages. It's not that exactly like clockwork happens every 50 years. You might get two of them back to back, but for the most part, they happen on average every 50 years. Well, our 10-year floods were happening back to back in consecutive years, all down the Mississippi River. Huge, huge flooding out to miles away from the actual river channel. Flooding. Everybody makes a big stink about New Orleans. Okay, that's one city. Imagine that much flooding across the entire length of the Mississippi River. And that's what was going on during the mid 90s. Insurance companies were going broke. Imagine that. The whole point of an insurance company is they're betting on you never, never needing the insurance. When you, their consumer, needs the insurance multiple times, they start losing a lot of money. So these insurance companies are going broke. But here's the thing that just makes me laugh. This is the part that when you really think about it, you're like, okay, all right. You build your house in the middle of the floodplain. You know the river floods. Not a big surprise. Everybody knows the river floods. So my house, you know, my house gets flooded, my house gets carried away, in some cases. So what does the flood insurance do? Here's your check. Have a good day. Re go rebuild your home. So they do. Two years later, they're back at their insurance agency. My house flooded again. You get another check? Yep, here you go. Okay. <laughs> and then another... A couple years later, the river floods again, and guess what? 
So it's, it's kind of like this. They get money. Well, it's not. It's, it's really not a scheme. It really. It's just. It's common sense. What would you tell your friend that calls you up and like, yeah, I got in an accident again. Can I get a new car? No, oh, sure, I'll buy a new car. Ah, oh, I got in an accident again. Okay, fine, I'll get you another car. Sorry, I got in an accident again. I oh, will get you another car. At some point, it starts getting old. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, with car insurance, you're easily dropped because of your destructive driving. So here's what we have. We actually passed a law in 1996. Um, and I can't remember the title of it, but it's like some Flood Plain Protection Act. They call it environmental protection, but it's actually to protect people from their own stupidity. Um, basically what it said is, you built your house in a flood plain or you purchased a house in a flood plain. We will forgive you once. We will give you money for building or buying within a flood plain. However, if you are going to accept our money, you must move. Because we are not going to protect your house again with the same river in the same floodplain. So they, were, they always chose the both places because they were always protected. Well, no, I mean, basically what happened is you have, because these floodplains aren't like this narrow little valley. I mean, you could easily fit entire towns in the floodplain. So basically, what insurance companies were saying, or whether the federal government came in on this and said, if you want money, or your flood insurance, that's fine. But you're not rebuilding in the same spot. Because otherwise, we'll see it again in just a few years. So why are flood plains so desirable? Not for living. Notice the use of the land in this flood plain. Do you see a lot of homes? Nope. Do you see any major cities? Nope. What is it used for? Why? Why? Soil. Why is the soil so rich? It's not the water thing. Uh, I get a lot of students who tell me it's because it's so full of water. It's not about the water. It's the sediments that are carried in the water that are deposited after the water. There you go. After the water recedes, after it goes back to normal stages, all those pieces, all those nutrients are then deposited in the flood plains, and that's why it's so rich, so able to grow such rich crop. Okay? So that's the whole point there. Um, that's why we want to, that's why a lot of people like to go to the, the flood plains. Now, why don't you stop and think about this for a minute? We'll talk a little bit about the Army Corps of Engineers, which is kind of funny. Um, Army Corps of Engineers was brought in by several states during the late 50s and 60s. And their goal was to control the flooding. Yes. So what do they do? Put a dam. No. But actually, here's why they put a dam. The Mississippi River is still one of the major cargo carrying rivers in the United States. Put a dam on, can't keep moving the ships. So they just they didn't want to put a dam on the river. So guess what they did? Built walls. They built walls. Okay? Now, I'm asking this. I'm going to take two cross country runners. One runner, I'm going to say, goes straight from point A to point B. The other runner, I'm going to tell him to zigzag the way there. Who do you think is really running faster? No. Who's running the fastest? That's why I went over Straight. Whenever we're in cross country, we're always supposed to cut across the thing instead of going around. Yeah, every time you turn, you actually lose the energy. As you're turning the corner, you're losing your momentum, you're losing your energy, and you got to start all over again. So the whole point of the zigzag is it actually slows down the velocity. So it's like crashing back and forth. Exactly. Slow down rather than to keep going straight. So if you have a river that zigzags. Okay, that's what we actually call a meander. It actually is slowing the river down. You take that same river and you put it in a straight channel, guess what it does? Flies through the channel. Slight problem. No levees, we have small floods every year, every couple of years on a big deal. It floods. You put up a 20 foot levee, and now what you've created instead of small floods periodically, now you've created a 20-foot flood 
out for miles. Just got a song. Every single year. Do you guys realize that there's a town in North Dakota that has completely uprooted its town? It literally abandoned the city and moved elsewhere. No, they literally moved. They said, forget this. The town could not afford to keep rebuilding after every single flood. So, all right. So, uh, that's just something to think about there. Uh, you guys do need to read through section 9, 1, and 9, 2 tonight. And I do have your homework for you.